And I remember coming up to Garrett towards the end of the game as the Vikings were going down for that final drive, saying, Garrett, um, tied game. Uh, this could come down to Ryan Longwell or you. And then uh, fourth quarter comes around, and I remember John Carney pulling me aside and saying, hey, gee, I think this game is going to, you know, it's, it's going to come down to you. And so I was kind of a little bit nervous, and I kept pacing on the sideline, and John, that's when he pulled me down. He said, no, you just need to relax, and when it's time to do your job, you need to be ready to do your job. Oh, everybody was on the knee. Everybody was praying. Everybody was hoping. I'm just like, please make it. That was my, I'm praying, you know, to guys like, God, please let him make this. And I'm like, and it's not for me, you know. And I, I think everybody was thinking this too. Make this field goal for the city. I vividly remember it like it was yesterday. And at the same time, it was kind of a blur. Going out there, it was like really a, a horse with blinders on, knowing that um, you know we're gonna we're gonna execute this and uh, we're we're gonna head to Miami. What do you say to someone who's got like something that's significant on the line? You just want them to relax and and reassure them that hey, this is uh, this spot is where you belong. And it was just a matter of I had a you know, very simple thought mind you know or thought process in my mind of tempo and uh, you know, stay through the ball. And sure enough, um, as expected, the snap was perfect, the hold was perfect. Snap, placement, kick by Hartley, and it is, and it's good! It's good! It's good! <laughs> Pigs have flown! Hell is frozen over! The Saints are on their way to the soul! He crushed it, you know, and even as, uh, even as much as we talked about tempo, he still came in and crushed it. It was just a, as electric as it gets. It's so hard to describe really what it feels like, but then when you hear that and you hear the emotion and what it meant to that many people, um, it's as much about that, I think, and what we were able to do with and for the community as it was as just trying to get a Super Bowl for ourselves. So I think that's why it makes me emotional is because I, I recognize the amount that went into it and just this unique relationship between the community and the team. And that was it. That was sort of like the pivotal you know, crescendo moment. And um, you can feel the emotion. And I still feel it every time, you know, even to this day when I just think about it. But that night especially, we had a good time. Joe, as Joe Vitt would say, we kicked it over the fence that night. There was a handful of things that concerned us. Um, Indianapolis had, had really finished the season well and, and played well in the playoffs. Peyton Manning uh, was playing at a high level of their offense, and they had just won a Super Bowl against the Bears in 06 in Miami. So they're not only back in Miami, they're at the same hotel they're in the same bedroom. I mean, you know, and it's a little bit of like, they were they were already here in this role. How do we try to slow down what they're doing and then take advantage of, of some things that we want to do? Um, I think the biggest challenge I felt was that feeling that, that took place, rightfully so, that euphoria for the city that's never had a team go to the Super Bowl. And it's like, well, that's not it. We're not done. You, you know, in other words, you got to be careful because if it really, if you really want it to be special, then you have to win this game. And so kind of uh, measuring that excitement, measuring those elements uh, and not just being satisfied with playing in the game. We had a, had a good time and we had media day the next day. A couple of us were late. I was one of them. So uh, with that being said, I'm like, oh man, you know, I'm late, I have a game. I'm like, I hope and pray he doesn't bench me for this game. I know he's upset, but you know, ended up still making it, making it to media day, making it the whole nine. So I'm, so I'm really on eggshell. So I'm saying to myself like, okay, so I gotta have a great game. That's what I'm saying in the back of my mind. I have to have a great game because here I'm already, I was late for media day and I have my head coach 
who's looking at, I know he's kind of looking at me, he's upset, so probably under a magnifying glass. And I think sometimes Sean is also, I would say secretly rooting for players to have some mishaps like that um, so that he can come in and sort of step on some throats and remind everybody exactly what this moment is. Um, I don't think he intentionally you know, planned for that to happen or said, hey, why don't you guys show up late today? But I mean, he's the kind of guy who would you know, come up with a plan like that just because it's a chance to sort of redirect everybody's attention in the right way. Tuesday was media day, and so the home team was the, were the Colts. Um, they were on for, I think you're on the field for 50 minutes. Um, and then when they finished, call it 10, 10.30, the Saints were next. Um, so our buses left the hotel, I think, at 9.30 which isn't a, like an early bus, mind you, to catch, right? <laughs> but we had media days Tuesday, so look, Monday night is probably the night a player is gonna go out, and we had five guys that weren't on the bus, and um, so we had a little mini crisis in the locker room, and we got that hand handled. And Sean let us have it. He said, look, you guys are here to party and have fun, like you can go home now, like we're here to win this game. I don't know what else anybody else can think is anywhere close to as important as that. Um, and from that point on, we were kind of like, okay, okay, like we can party after the game. So the league was upset because we weren't on the field yet. And we kind of kicked everyone out of the locker room except the players and, uh, and just tried to, you know, really refocus, say, what are we doing? You know, I mean, we're missing a bus to media day at 9.30, you know? So if this is the way it's going to be, then if we're going to be out all week long, let me know and I'll go out with you. <laughs> you know, in other words, we're not, going to, we're not going to just be here at this, at this game. But right afterwards, though, Drew called us all in there and said, look, man, I trust this team. I love this team and I love who we are. And uh, we got, we're going to be ourselves and we'll be exactly who we've always been. And we're going to win this game and we're not going to let this get in the way of anything else. We were still the underdogs because we we're playing against Peyton Manning you know, in, in, in the Colts. So um, kind of still that little extra chip on our shoulder um, and a uh, little extra motivation with all that we had done that entire season and still kind of being passed over as far as, you know, not being the favorite, not being talked about nearly as much as, as those guys were. As it works in the sports world, we're all about stars. And we, I mean, the networks will build everything around a star. Going into this game, it was all about Peyton. Not that Peyton's asking for it, but it was all about Peyton. And I thought the Saints were a little bit of an afterthought going in. You know, they were they were the underdog, and Peyton was as huge a star as we've ever had in the history of the league. The rich story about it too was the fact that Peyton, of course, was raised right there in the Garden District in New Orleans. He's going against his dad's team, going against his hometown team. Not to say that it was David and Goliath, but it was like you got this team that's experienced. They've been here before. They've done it before. They've already won a Super Bowl before. All we heard about. And you hear it, and it sucks because you got here for two weeks. It's not like a normal game where you just get one week and then you're ready to go. So by the time we had got down to Miami, I was so tired of answering questions about Peyton Manning. I don't know what the Colts are doing, but we were in full pads practicing like we're in two days. It was crazy. I was like, we had a Super Bowl, and you know, we were hitting like live. I couldn't believe it. You know, we we were the newcomers. You know, we were the the wide-eyed. You know, walking in the stadium, having no idea what to expect. Just, you know, some might have said like, you know, man, we're kind of happy to be here. You know, that that wasn't the mentality. But I think on the flip side, here's the Indianapolis Colts, veteran team. They had they had just won a Super Bowl four years previous at that exact spot, you know, um, so many guys have been a part of that. They kept the exact same routine, you know, that they had when they won back in 06. So for them, this was kind of old hat. As uh, defensive backs, we were in the, in the film room for an extra three, four, five hours watching film because we were going against another quarterback who's a first ballot Hall of Famer in Peyton Manning. So we know if we don't do our job, he's just going to carve us up on the back end. Peyton's so good at recognizing, you know, a front, a coverage, a tip. Um, so how do we, you know, how do you change things up enough to um, at least slow them down some? Uh, that's hard to do. We also had a unique game plan that I think was just brilliant by Greg 
to completely change our coverage concepts. So it wasn't going to be something where, you know, say Peyton's going to go through his first 15 and he's going to be able to get into a rhythm for what we're doing. And that's going to force Peyton to respond, react to us, as opposed to us always trying to react to him. We wanted to have enough plays to be able to throw something at him in the third or fourth quarter that he hadn't seen from the first quarter, because that was the only way we'd have a chance to be able to get him long term and be able to win this game in a fourth quarter game. Because we knew it was going to be four quarters. It was going to be a knockout, drag out game. And it was going to have to be tight and we we're going to have to do something in the, uh, at the end of the game to win it.